This is the heaviest element ever photographed. It's Einsteinium 253, and it has a half-life of about 20 and a half days, and the reason it's so grainy is because of the radiation it was giving off. But it's not the heaviest element that's ever been made, it's just the heaviest element that we can make a lot of. This is ye old periodic table, and we can see all of the elements that have been synthesized. The one I just showed you, Einsteinium, is right there on the periodic table. But there's a whole bunch of other elements that have been synthesized, including fermium, which is one higher, a whole bunch here, this entire area here, all the way out to oganescent here, with 118 protons in it. And generally speaking, the heavier the element, the more unstable it is. That's why the heaviest element that occurs naturally has atomic number 92, it's uranium. And all of the heavier elements get more and more radioactive, more and more unstable, as you increase the amount of protons and neutrons. The reason for this is that inside the nucleus of an atom, there's two competing forces. There's the strong nuclear force, which is a very, very tight but short-range force, pulling neutrons and protons together. And then there's the electrostatic repulsion that pushes protons apart because they have the same charge. The smaller the nucleus, the more the strong nuclear force can have an effect, because the strong nuclear force acts over smaller ranges. As the nuclei get bigger and bigger with more and more protons and neutrons, the strong nuclear force has less and less of an effect, and the electrostatic repulsion pushing the nucleus apart has a bigger and bigger effect. Eventually, the nucleus just falls apart. Nonetheless, we're left with the mystery of how is it that huge elements, like lead-208, can be stable, yet have so many protons and neutrons. For comparison, if the helium nucleus was the size of Pluto, the lead-208 nucleus would be the size of Earth. And yet, lead-208 is not radioactive at all, it is completely stable. And you would be right for thinking that there's some sort of magic happening here. What I'm talking about are magic numbers. Let's take a detour to chemistry. Maybe you learned at some point that there are certain chemical elements that have just the right number of electrons that they are completely unreactive. These are the noble gases, helium, neon, argon, and so on. And the reason they're so stable is because they're filling all of their electron energy shells. Atoms that have just a few electrons short of a complete energy shell want more electrons, and energies that have just a few more electrons than a full energy shell want to give those electrons away, and this leads to increased reactivity. And atomic nuclei kind of have the same thing. They also have energy shells. It's just in the nucleus, there are shells of protons and shells of neutrons. Now here are the first seven magic numbers for neutrons, meaning that if an atom has this many neutrons, then it will be more stable than its neighbors. By the way, the next one after 126 is believed to be 184. Protons have nearly the same magic numbers, except the last one. Instead of 126, you have 114. So that means that atoms with 114 protons and 184 neutrons would be particularly stable. And so we get the hypothesized island of stability. Namely, some atoms might have just the right number of neutrons and protons, so that even though they're super, super heavy, they're still stable. And maybe we'll see one soon.